Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Going to look at John Byrne's sex tape today, Ed, featuring uh, Big Barda and Superman. But before we get into this kind of weird one, uh, a couple of plugs for the host of Cartoonist Kayfabers. We're both makers and creators of comics. Ed Piscor's Red Room, the Antisocial Network, now available in finer bookstores wherever you pick up your books. Uh, Murder for Fun and Profit on the Dark Web. Um, the perfect gift for this holiday season, and uh, you can pick this up wherever you find your comics. You can also follow along and read early glimpses into the next Red Room stories on Ed's Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. You can follow me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can see a lot of my original art and how I make the comics I make, like Street Angel Deadly Scroll Alive, available now wherever books are sold from Image Comics. Pick this up at your local comic shop or online at your favorite bookstore. And uh, While Supplies Last, another perfect book for the holiday season. And again, join me on patreon.com slash jimrug. So, Jimmy, we put out a video some, some time ago, man. John Byrne's most notorious comic. And uh, we forget, like, we exist in the echo chamber, right? And our echo chamber is other people who make comics. And when it comes to makers, the snowblind issue of Alpha Flight that John Byrne did is so notorious amongst cartoonists because he hacked the system, uh, literally and figuratively, I guess, man, <laughs> because he was able to, to, to make some money uh, with a bunch of blank pages. You know, like the husband of the editor of that came, came into the comments and was like, you know, it was really probably just as hard or maybe even tougher for him to arrange <laughs> those panels. And I'm like, listen, husband, go, go, go cook dinner. While your wife is doing her editing job, because if you're telling me that a bunch of blank panels <laughs> is harder or just as much work, you I, need to go get your shine box, son. Yeah, I often get comments from people that, that if I'm doing freelance work for, and it's like, oh, it's an easy change. Yeah. It's an easy change if you've never drawn anything before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and those empty panels are uh, as hard as drawing a, a real picture. Only if you don't actually draw anything. I, I would have to laugh in that guy's face <laughs> if he said that to me in person. But overwhelmingly. For the readership, for the peanut gallery, the notorious comic that John Byrne put together is this issue, 593 of Action Comics with the love tape, man. And uh, he wastes no time. Superman and my wife on the cover, poor Mr. Miracle. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's surprising when I track down this issue... Um, it is what it's advertised as, which I was a little bit surprised to see. You know, it's funny. Like I, like I had this issue. Like uh, when there, are, there are names. You know, there's a couple dozen names in comics. Like when you're digging around in quarter bins and stuff, you see the name. You just grab it. Mm -hmm. Just, just take the comic, man. So like when people were like naming the name, and I'm like Google. Oh, I have that. Like I don't think I ever read this. It's a good one. Um, you know, we've we've looked at a few John Byrne comics uh, over the years, and often commented. He's such a good superhero artist, especially like on newsprint in the 80s and, of course, had a legendary run on Superman. And this is in the middle of it. So start out with a nine panel grid of Mr. Miracle uh, walking through this test in order to just unlock his front door. It's awkward. <laughs> I was looking at this thing and trying to figure out like what he's got and what he's building and stuff. It's a little bit strange, but I love the idea. It, it, it always is. <clears throat> and here you have tongue in cheek superhero comics like this is little kids love this shit i i was i was scooping this stuff up you know that's a hell of a two-page spread right there and and it's little kid comics it's dark side chilling in a chaise yes <laughs> yes with a goblet and stuff man. <laughs> i love seeing like the slightly antiquated uh av equipment in the room absolutely uh interesting credit is Story pencils and figure inks, John Byrne. Background inks, Keith Williams. So that's kind of neat. You don't see that too often in the in the credits for these Marvel and DC comics. And uh, Dark Seed is is there. Can't be up to any good. You come home and find Dark Side in your uh, sitting in your lounge. You know you're in for a bad day. <laughs> and see, he 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 knew who the winner was, man. Between Betamax and VHS. That is true. <laughs> it's so funny in the context of the story to think about what drove the the winner of that that contest. It's always porn, and and uh, it's so like this whole story is so crazy. So like, Darkseid is coming to like cuckold 
Mr. Miracle. I'm, I'm going to call him Miracle Man a bunch of times, I think, through this thing, man. Oh, man, and a Slash Maraud. Awesome ad. What a cool ad. It's real great, too, because, like, the, the storytelling of it, it's like, it's like pop in the VHS tape, and then you got your, your, your yep, trailer. Have a snack. And here's your movie you're watching. And as the, as the dudes are checking it out, at the same exact point, <laughs> at the same exact point, man, uh, I, think, I think in the business... Uh, they're seeing pink. <laughs> that's business jargon. I got you. Yeah, I think you're right, Ed. I think that's exactly what's happening here. And Darkseid very happy with himself here. <laughs> he just cocked out fucking Mr. Miracle. Man, it's it's so disturbing, too. Like, it's pretty clear what what's happening here. Like, this is a porn tape somebody has made of Big Barda. And uh, is the story, you know, the context of the story is... She's kind of a willing participant. This wasn't a hidden camera in a dressing room. This is uh, this is bad stuff that that Scott Free has just seen of his wife. And of course, cut to the pornographer's office. Perfect storytelling there. And uh, here's our mastermind, an ex-apocalypse, uh, not soldier. This guy was so disgusting that Dark Side sent him away. So this is a the grossest of the gross from from the worst planet in the galaxy named Sleaze, and has some kind of uh, ability to control people. You know, like a hypnosis almost. He, and guess who he's ensnared? He's he's working with a pornographer named Mister Grossman. <laughs> well named. And, and he brings, I, I, I hate the 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 comb over is is like the staple of how are we going to draw a sleazy guy? It's the comb over. Sure. That office really sells it, man. It's good stuff. That's a good office. And he's he's praising the sleaze guy like yo that tape you brought me I had to like run off thousands of them and it, it did make me wonder like like what. what What's the like? How did that stuff work back then? You know, because it would be this like paper bag, low key kind of. I mean, they had distribution set up in the mid '80s for porno and shit. But like, you know, that early forty do stuff is real interesting uh, period of time. Yeah, it's such a weird like. All of it is such a weird subject for a Superman comic. It makes me wonder like what Byrne encountered in New York. This is set in the suicide slums of Metropolis, and uh, you know, Forty this, Second Street. This previous issue kind of gets into that a little bit. And uh, it totally feels like it's out of uh, 42nd Street. Totally. So, you know, it, it makes me think, like, all these freelancers at Marvel that lived in New York, you know, they would, you, you hear stories, right, that they carry their, their money in different clips on themselves so they'd have, like, a fake wallet and stuff. Like, that was a tough time. Yeah, like, like people, like, literally carrying loot for payoff money to just, like, get those, like, teenage kids with the switchblade to, like, leave them alone and stuff like this, man. Now, Mr. Grossman... I give him the benefit of the doubt because he he can at least rent New York office space for his business. But when Sleaze comes by with Superman, Mr. Grossman says something I actually think is incorrect. Uh, You know, having no experience in the business, but he says that, like, you know, I don't know that solo videos would, would, uh, would, would sell very much. And I would think that if you were selling jerk-off tapes of Superman <laughs> blowing, blowing Kryptonian loads and stuff, like, I think that would be gangbusters, you know? I think there's probably a market for that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> like, you would, you would have some th- theatricality to it, man. Have them maybe, you know, do like the gallery shooter that was at Kennywood. Have, have them, you know, shoot cans with it or, you know... Novelty, novelty uh, shots, a jackass version of a Superman porn tape. Right, yeah, yeah. Get crazy, dispatch your enemies, man. Blow their fucking heads off. I'm with you, Ed. I think uh, I think any any filmmaker would jump at the chance to get Superman on tape doing anything. Solo. This efforts. happens to be his uh, special specialty, but uh, it won't be a solo act because he also has Big Barda under his control. You need somebody with the fallopium tubes that could handle that shot. The Man of Steel. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, Sleaze is putting together quite a uh, quite a collection of actors uh, under his label. Yeah, man. The original Vivid. Man, all of these ads I love. I mean, that looks like this could be the building across the street from where this pornography shit is happening. You know, that's a real... <clears throat> it could 100%. There's some real wonky stuff going on with the perspective on that desk. But this window, I was looking at this window and it made me think of like the old Neil Adams stories about like, nobody knows how to draw a window. Like you need photo reference for it. And I got to I gotta say, this is proof. Yeah. This window is absurd. I'm sure. <laughs> There's no frame. There's nothing there. Just blinds. Just the noir blinds. (laughs) 
So Mr. Miracle sees that videotape and heads to the suicide slums right away. Now, Jim, the kids who bought this comic in the little shop at Save, they bought it because they saw Superman on the cover. It's wholesome. It has the comics code stamp on it. So with all of that in mind, you got to give the uh, Mr. Miracle origin story as he's thinking about his origins uh, with Sheldorf. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so we get a couple pages of that. I feel like that's something John Byrne's loving to get into, right? All this Jack Kirby fourth world stuff. Yeah. And Mr. Miracle always looks awesome. It's a really good good costume. It's yeah. it, like like I, I sort of hate that it's a costume. Cause if this is just the creature, like some kind of weird android or something, like to me that's so much cooler. Yeah, I think he always looks good. This is this is fun story. I actually had to like go back uh, a couple times where he's like, you know, Mother Box senses no immediate danger, I wonder. Like, flip the page? Yeah, because you see shadows of claw, like claw hands coming after <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so the the slum alley guys pounce on him, beat him up, put him in a bag with change. Because they just know that Mr. in case Mr. Miracle ever comes to town, we're going to create a fucked up trap. This is how to treat him. Yeah. Then you put him in a dumpster, put some schmutz all over him, weld it... <laughs> race to the docks push it off probably dock. through another another neighborhood i don't think we're in a suicide slum anymore yeah because if there was a dock there would be money coming into yeah, the yeah. municipality and they wouldn't have to be Got some stevedores or something union there exactly man see uh wire season two uh toss them into the hudson and uh yep no no problem <laughs> mother box was right <laughs> no danger <laughs> that's good man it is it, it's it's I, I have no complaints about that that's it's a funny good. use of like two pages too to show like the whole trap that he's being put into and there's not even a, a panel to explain him getting out yet jim back to porn please oh right yes we are on the uh on the set this made me think of uh commando whenever he's fighting uh, uh bill duke in, yeah. the, in that little motel and they crash through the room this is the exact setup right here i don't think there's a director in that movie but there's there are two people in bed and there's a camera on a tripod at the foot of the bed <laughs> and it's the weirdest thing to see in commando when you're a kid and rent that right and you're like what is happening here <laughs> and uh he's a director man so he's like uh, you call that acting i want passion and and he does look real square man mm. like he's got the hover hand like he's afraid to even even touch a motherfucker. Yeah, that's the middle school dance where uh, arms are locked at <laughs> yeah. the elbows. 1950s middle school <laughs> dance. It is funny. It's a funny characterization. It's funny for Byrne to put that on uh, Superman because I feel like that's the thing everybody make fun of Superman as being like this stiff kind of, you know, b big blue Boy Scout. And uh, Byrne seems to be right in step with it. Can't even thrust some hips, man. No. And she's a little bit looks a little bit more interested than uh than superman in that scene yeah she's leaning in some you know she's she's filming those triceps dude she's she, she you know she's trying to she's trying to get the machine working she's also a veteran you know she's already made some successful tapes they call them starlets exactly uh mr miracle spies this through the uh <laughs> through the window and has to crash the party by the way he stutters babarda yeah well babarda. That's, that's alarming man imagine seeing your wife with superman yeah that's tough. You're not coming back from that. Uh-uh, man. So he interrupts them, and uh, we do get the flashback of how his little laser cut out of that dumpster. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we even needed an explanation. Nah, I would no, have left it's that better without out. it. Yeah. That feels like an editor putting his head, sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. But uh, they, he breaks this up. Sleaze goes to make his run, and Sleaze has this kind of like tentacle porn being <laughs> that shows up, right? La blue girl. Yeah, if you showed up for the sex tape, you're probably enjoying this sequence. Yeah. And uh, Bar to make short order of that has to jam her hand in and find its little brain and squeeze the brain to kill it. This is a porn comic. It really is odd, right? That's the part that stands out to me is what is John Byrne thinking with this pitch? The pinkness is actually like there, there, there could be some, there could be some to that man. Because I, I remember like signing up for Little League in fifth grade at the volunteer fire hall, having to use the bathroom, and I just looked under their sink and saw stacks of uh, hustlers, and it's the first time I ever saw the between the legs of a of a model lady. <laughs> And I, and it almost looked like that to me. I was like, what the heck is that? This is probably scarred a bunch. We're going to get comments from like the kids who read this whenever they were eight or something. And we're like, what? I had no idea what I was looking at. They just at. weren't the same after this. So Superman goes after Sleaze. I mean, this. That right there with the gimmick inside. 
You know I don't know, man. You really got to look, I think, Ed. I don't know about you that. You really got to look to find some of this stuff. Is this the beginning of, like, the bad girl movement in comics? Frederick Rhythm was right. <laughs> Superman catches up, but Sleaze appears to kill himself by uh, igniting all the methane gas in the sewer and exploding. And that was the whole point of of it. And there's even, you know, there's metaphor to the, 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 the methane gas, the, the, the sewage of the uh, subterranean metropolis. So the whole point of Darkseid showing up was to get these guys ornery enough to uh, incite Little Sleaze to, to dispatch himself. Yeah, that's basically your conclusion. Um, weird comic. Super weird. We should maybe have a weird comic playlist. This would be uh, certainly fit well on that. But uh, I still stand by that John Byrne is like the 80s guy for these superhero comics. Yeah. It just looks so on model or something. It's a good Superman. He's really internalized that, you know, dynamics of uh, Kirby. Um, and and it, was, it was cool to see this kind of approach in DC Comics because that stuff was real straight up and down and, and uh, you know, mid-shot. Uh, they, they were going for, like, slick inking and Bob Dobb. Church of the Subgenius kind of clip arty mm -hmm. artwork, you know, like when when they're citing guys like Gil Kane and, and shit, like it's like it's because they had just enough quirk that wasn't John Broom or Irv Novak or one of these guys. So to have this uh, John Byrne kind of Marvel approach to uh, DC Comics, you just didn't have it, you know. The closest you had was New Adams before that doing weird stuff. Yeah, and that would have been a decade before. And then and then they just went back to status quo, really. I love this, like the image of Barda and Mr. Miracle in costume. Man, I wish there would have been more of these comics. The, the burn at the height of his powers doing fourth world stuff, because those designs look good. His interpretation of them is fantastic. The color lends well to those characters, too, because it's they all 100% plates of stuff, and you get no no um, measles. Yeah, they they look fantastic. So really cool to see all that. I love this panel, like the love triangle, as they're recounting like what they remember from uh, being under Sleaze's control and, and, and poor Mister Miracle stuck in the middle. They're doing it for <laughs> Mister Miracle's sake. They're like, see, they're non-verbally communicating with their eyes. Like, listen, let's preserve a little bit of Mister Miracle's dignity because he can get out of any external traps, but he can't get outside of that trap. That's that's warehoused inside of his skull. <laughs> so we gotta like have some grace, and we have to we have to play like like we don't even know what happened, man. Because Scott Free might not even be able to function under those conditions. Look how much even in a conversation these characters are like you know t tilted little angles here. Everybody's angled a little bit. It's just whatever you can do to make it more interesting than that straight up kind of narrow house style stiff approach. Yeah, these are good-looking comics. It's it's kind of fun, I think, to go through uh, the the burn run from the '80s. It just feels like it's it's just really well done superhero stuff. Yeah, you could pull pull any issue and find some, find <laughs> some something to talk about for sure. Good to go. I am. Okay, favors like follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jimmy? Join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download a dozen out of print zines and mini comics. You can see a lot of my original art, layouts, scripts, how I make comics like Street Angel, Plain Janes, Octobriana, and more at patreon.com slash jimrug. Red Room, the antisocial network in stores now, man. Get it while it's hot because those book collections are flying off the shelves. In December, we're putting out a Red Room Trigger Warnings issue number one. Uh, it's going to be in stores before Christmas. Make sure you get your hands on that. Get that put on your pull list. And I'm serializing those comics on my Patreon uh, ahead of time. Um, you can get the links to all this stuff at my link tree in the description below this video. What else, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. All right, given those margin orders, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.